Mic check, one, two, one, two. What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Tank B Chopping, and I'm back with another haircut tutorial. Alright guys, so what we're gonna be doing is a one and a half with the grain, mid fade, and we added some enhancement for the beard in the lineup. Let's go. Alright guys, so jumping straight into this haircut, first thing I need to do is I need to comb out this hair. So he, it's been a good minute before he's had a haircut, so I decided, you know what I'm saying, we're going to need to comb this hair out. That way I can comb out these curls, that way when I do cut it, you know, the clipper, guide, the clipper glides effortlessly. So as you can see, I'm just combing out the hair. You know, we're going to comb it a good amount of time to make sure we get out all these curls, just to make sure that it doesn't irritate the client either when we're cutting the hair. And as you can see here guys, I'm combing out the beard a little bit also because we are going, we're going to freehand it a little bit. We're going to shape it up. So I needed to comb that out also just so I can see exactly how long the beard is and how much we need to take off. Alright guys, so what I'm doing here is I got my one and a half on my Andes Masters. I said that weird. I got my one and a half on my Andes Masters and I'm going with the grain. And uh, a lot of times people would probably start a little longer, but... I've cut this dude's hair a good amount of times, you know what I'm saying? He's a good client of mine. He's been coming to me for like two or three years or so. So uh, I know the level that cuts his hair good. So I just went ahead and put that one and a half with that one guard on my clipper, uh, opened the lever all the way, and I came with the grain. However, towards his crown area, uh, we're going to keep that hair there. And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to go over the crown area with the number two guard. And the reason for that is, you know, you don't want to mess up that crown area. You don't, you don't want to take that down too short. And he is, uh, he's a little light in the crown area. Not, not much, but a little bit. So I want to make sure that we keep it a little longer so that way it looks a little darker and fuller. And remember, guys, when you're going with the grain, you want to be very careful. You want to make sure that you comb the hair out previously like I, like I saw me do. And you just want to take your time, follow that growth pattern or that wave pattern. That way you, do, you don't plug your client or, you know, leave your uh, client with hair too short. That they, You know, leave it too short when they want it a little longer. And then now I am doing the sides, even though I'm going to... Uh, bought the sides out anyways I decided to debulk the sides a little bit just to make it easier and so I could see more of what I'm doing when I get to that so right here is my number two guard like I said guys and I am going with the grain following that swirl making sure that I get all this down to that length and uh once it gets all the, all the way down to that length it's gonna look you know nice and faded into the one and a half guard And as, and as you can see, I'm going over it a good amount of time just to make sure I get it all down to that length. And now what I'm doing, guys, I'm debulking the sides. Uh, I believe this is my number three with the lever closed. I really can't see. It's either my number three with the lever closed or my two with the lever open. I, I really don't remember what exactly uh, what I did. But most of the time, if I do a one open with the grain on the sides, I do a two and a half or uh, a three. You know, so I, I don't know exactly what it is. But nonetheless, guys, I'm going in with my uh, GTX XOs. Uh, I'm balling out the sides. As you can see, I'm, uh, we are giving them a mid fade, so I'm not coming too high. And even though sometimes my, my mid fades uh, look like they start a little lower, uh, that's that's what I'm trying to do and the reason why is I like to give myself room to work and I like to stretch my blends out a little bit so it, it looks a little lower than a mid fade but it's not yet a low fade but that's how I like to set in my guideline and it just helps me give my client an overall a good a good haircut and as you can see I am leaving some of that hair in the front you know for that ghost lineup that I like to do and then we're just matching this side with the opposite side Alright, so now that that is done, I'm going in with my shaver. And remember, guys, you can use any shaver you want. You don't have to use this particular shaver. But I like this shaver a lot. You know, it works really well. This is the Babyliss FX3 shaver. Uh, I'm going, you know, I'm taking everything on the side down to that, you know, that skin level. And the closer I get to that guideline that I created with my trimmers, I'm making sure that I'm relieving some of that pressure and I'm using a slight flick out motion. That way, it doesn't create too harsh of a line. But if it does, I know that I, I know basically how I can fix that. And uh, if I need to go back and do it, I will. But I don't think I needed to on this haircut. But you can always flip the shaver the opposite way where the one foil is uh, closer to the hair and just tap at it going downward and that'll help get rid of that line if you leave one so now we're getting into some actual fade work i got my gold and his masters my lever is all the way open and i'm going to be coming up about three quarters of an inch or so you know half an inch to three quarters of an inch i always do that because i don't know exactly 
you know, my, my, you know, my level, not my levels, but I don't know exactly how high I go, but it's about three quarters of an inch or so. Let's just say that, right? So I'm setting in my next guideline. And as you can see, I'm being really consistent with it. I'm just going over this a couple times. I want to make sure it's all down to that length before I move on. So I'm going to do it a good amount of times. And I have that brush in my hand, making sure that I'm brushing this uh, extra debris away. You know what I'm saying? That way I can actually see what I'm doing. And as you saw me just do right there, I closed my lever halfway. I came up halfway into this section. And then I'm going to close my lever notch by notch after this and work my way down. So by the time my lever is all the way closed, I should be attacking that bottom line. And same thing, guys. I'm being real consistent with it. I'm going over it a good amount of times. You know, I want to make sure it's all down to that length before I move on. And remember guys, you can spend as much time as you need doing this. Uh, sometimes I do it quicker than others. You know, I, I don't have like a time limit that I do it on. Some some hair just fades in easier, easier than others. Some just takes a little longer. So you just gotta make sure you go through those steps. And then sometimes what I like to do also is I detail while I'm doing it. So there's some dark areas that I may go back and touch up. So yeah, so as you can see here, I'm detailing in this section and I'm not taking too much time detailing it. I'm just tapping it up, uh, tapping it a little bit just to give a cleaner look before I move on to my next step. All right, so now my next step that I'm doing here, guys, this is my number one guard lever open. So that's making it a one and a half. And I'm coming up another section. So I'm coming up about half an inch or so. But as you can see, I am using more of a flick out motion this time. That's because I don't want to leave a harsh line. And so I'm coming up, flicking out. And I'm same thing, guys, being real consistent with it. I'm making sure I'm going over it a couple times before I move on. And I'm making sure I'm using that brush to brush that hair down. And then my next step, or well, the same step, I guess you can say, I'm trying to fade out this bottom line. So I close my lever and I'm attacking that bottom line in that section. And if this, if this doesn't get that line out completely, that's fine. I know I can come back with my half guard or my zero guard, 116 guard, whatever y'all want to call it. And I know that will take care of that line for me. All right, so now this is still my one guard uh, lever open and I came with the grain and then I'm going to close it little by little at that top line, you know, right where the parietal ridge is. And I'm closing it little by little to debulk this area and to make this fade into my one with the lever open against the grain. And that's normally what I do on uh, over curly hair, you know what I'm saying? Like I like to go with the grain to help bring that blend together. Instead of using my two with the lever open and fading in and then doing the two, I come with the grain and I feel that for me, I, I feel that that helps me out a lot. So now I'm going back in with my one and a half guard or my one guard lever open and I'm uh, attacking these areas, you know, doing a little bit of detail work, you know what I'm saying? Closing that lever notch by notch, detailing this area, trying to get it, you know, this area of the blend to look right. All right, so now that that is done, I'm going in with my 116 guard or my zero guard. My lever is halfway open and I'm coming into that next, uh, coming into that section, just flicking at that line. And then I'm going to close my lever notch by notch and try to get out that bottom line. And for the most part, this should take care of that bottom line. But if it doesn't, for whatever reason, I know that I can always come back in with my clipper, with my lever open, no guard, and get rid of that line if needed. And you'll see me adjust my lever a good amount of times on here, guys. And that's just because I want to be really consistent with it. So like I said, it didn't get rid of that line 100%. So I'm going back in with my clipper, uh, no guard, lever open. And I'm just, you know, flicking at this line. You really can't tell from this angle, but I'm just barely tapping at it, using a flick out motion, uh, adjusting my lever as needed to make sure I get that blend to come together. And I want to stress this, you know what I'm saying? Like, don't, don't go too much into that section on this part of the haircut. Because if you do, it's going to end up leaving another line or another dark spot. So I'm, I'm literally just barely tapping at that line or that dark area that I see and adjusting my lever just slightly. You know what I'm saying? Like barely closing it just to get that blend to come together. And as y'all can see, guys, this blend's already coming together, looking really good. Uh, there, there is this, yeah, there you go. The bottom line I saw, it was really faint, you know, but it's there. So I'm hitting it with my trimmers just to get out that line that I, I set in. And for the most part, that's getting rid of this um, this bottom line, making this blend really come together. And I know I'm not 100% done. I know I'm still gonna do some more detail work, but as y'all can see, it already looks, you know, pretty. It's it's pretty good. It's it's be, it's, it's passable. You know what I'm saying? Like it can pass for a haircut. But you know, your boy is trying to take it to the next level. Trying to get, get my client the best 
uh, service that I can give him. So I went back and detailed it some more. And now I'm working on his lineup. And y'all know how I do my lineups, guys. I like to start in the middle of the hairline set in my initial guideline and then work my way to the side that i was fading so i was fading his left side so i'm moving my way over to his left side and i'm gonna come all the way till i reach that vertical bar and line that up and then hit the c cup and he is thinning a little bit right there you know in the edge up area the uh, front lineup but it ain't no thing we're gonna add them enhancements you know we're gonna we're gonna make it look good you know what i'm saying it, I, I don't want to push his line too far back so I'm just trying to keep it, I don't want to say as natural as possible, but keep it crispy without going too far back. Because like I said, I know that I'm going to come in and hit them enhancements anyway. So it's not, it's, it's not really an issue. All right, so now that that lineup is there, it, uh, I feel that it really uh, pulls out the discrepancies and the dark areas in the haircut so I can go back in and detail it more. And once I did that, now I'm going back in, I'm fading his beard, started with just my uh, lever open, then I closed it, put that one guard on there, you know, fade, started with the open and closed it. And now I'm just hitting this lineup or, or this beard a little more with the trimmer to get that line out. And now I'm going to line up his beard. And we're we gonna try to keep his beard really full, you know what I'm saying? Like we ain't trying to go down on the cheek or bring him up on the jaw. We're just trying to keep it, you know, as basically as thick as we can keep it, but still make sure that it's sharp. All right, guys, so now we're moving on to the opposite side. So we're going to do the same exact thing that we did on this side of the haircut. I don't know why I stopped like that. But we're going to do the same thing on this side of the cut that we did to the opposite side. So I'm, I'm doing the same exact steps. I think the only difference uh, on this side is towards the parietal ridge area. I think I did use my number two guard. Uh, you know, with the lever open and then closed. Uh, I'm not 100% sure. But, you know, that that's the good thing about knowing your client's hair and knowing what your clippers and your guards do because you can always attack haircuts, you know, in a different in a different way and still get a good a good blend. Like, at the end of the cut, y'all gonna see that the whole haircut came together and looked nice. But like I'm saying is, I'm, I'm using a slightly, not really a different method, but towards that area, I guess you can say that I use a different method, but it still came together good. You know what I'm saying? So that, that's the good thing about knowing more than one method. You don't have to use the same one and I do this because for one sometimes I, I go to like autopilot and I'm not really like uh thinking about what I'm doing I'm just talking and, and cutting so my steps just come naturally like I'm not even really thinking about what I'm doing and then for two sometimes I do it because I want to give y'all a different perspective or a different not angle but like a different just different ways of doing the same thing you know what I'm saying so that that's why I do it so this is my number uh three guard I believe and I'm just hitting that top of that area I can't tell if that's my three or my two guard, and I don't want to lie to y'all. I believe it was my two. I don't know yet. But when in doubt, just use a bigger guard first and then come with the smaller guard if the bigger guard didn't do nothing. So now I'm going in with my one and a half with the grain. But like I was saying, guys, so if you use different techniques, you can still get the same look. And uh, that, that's the good thing about practicing these different uh, these different techniques on your clients. And I, I say practicing, and it's like, oh, you shouldn't be practicing on your clients. But... I've been doing this for long enough that if I do happen to not make it look exactly the same, I'll just go, I'll, I'll, blah, blah, blah. I'll just revert back to my normal steps and fix it. All right, guys. So I want to, I want to point out something right here. Uh, if y'all if y'all can tell, I don't know if y'all really paying attention or not, but his his well his left side is actually a little lower than his right side and i didn't notice that at the time that i did this lineup however i did go back in and fix it later on in the video and i just want to let y'all know that it happens man like you can't be perfect with one swipe you know one tap and it'd be perfect all the time so you know that, that's perfectly fine as long as towards the end of the cut you make sure you go back and you you look at your client straight on or you turn them towards the mirror and you actually see like okay this lineup needs to be brought up right here and that's the beauty about working in a barbershop you know what i'm saying well not in a barbershop but working with mirrors you know what i'm saying like turn your client towards the mirror make sure you turn them towards the mirror so you can check your lines check your edge up you know check your vertical bars uh check your c cup check your beard and the mirror is going to tell you if one side is higher or lower you know what i'm saying so don't necessarily trust your eyes 100 percent of the time
Alright guys, so now what I'm doing on top is I'm actually just freehanding the top. Uh, reason being is he had some little stray hairs, some little roach legs, you know what I'm saying? So I wanted to go with my clipper. Uh, I believe my clipper's closed right here. And I'm just getting all those stray hairs, you know, making sure that it looks nice and even and nice and clean on top. Alright, so this is what I was telling y'all earlier, guys. I went back in and I had to, you know, fix his lineup. And that, and that's okay. Like, there's nothing wrong with doing that, guys. Like, you don't have to be perfect your first time around. Like, as long as you catch it and you know and you realize it and you go back and fix it, you know, that, that's all that matters. As long as my client gets a good haircut and he's happy, that's all that matters. Alright, guys, so check it out. So I am using the Heat Stroke right here by Stylecraft. Uh, you can't see it on this angle. But on the other side, I'm using the heat stroke to uh, comb his beard out and make it, you know, nice and straight and stretched out. That way I can actually see what needs to be cleaned up and taken off because we're working to trim his beard freehand and clean it up a little bit. So I am using that heat stroke. Uh, just if y'all want to cop this tool, y'all can go to the Stylecraft website. The link is in my description and you can actually use my code Tank10 and save yourself a little bit of money. Uh, my clients always ask me where I got it from when I use it on them. They love it. So barbers, if y'all if y'all want to take your you know your beard trim to the next level a little bit you know buy that heat stroke and i and i know your clients are gonna like it like personally my clients like it i wouldn't say i like it because i don't got a beard right but i know my clients really do all right so now we're going in with the the straight razor and all i'm doing is i'm lining up everything that i do with my trimmers i'm just making sure i get everything razor sharp so remember guys when you're doing this you want to make sure you stretch that skin tight because you don't want to nick your client and I say this even though I gave my client a little nick on the left side. I don't know if y'all can see it, but now nah, you probably can't see it. But I gave him a little nick, but it's all good. You know, it happens. You know, I apologize and I cleaned it up. So it wasn't no big deal. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to my boy Tito Beats, man. He's the one that be supplying your boy with these beats. Y'all make sure to give him a follow on Instagram. I believe it's at Tito underscore Beats. And his YouTube is Tito Beats Productions. Alright guys, so now we're going to finish off we, uh, with these enhancements. So as you can see, I'm spraying them with the enhancements, making these lineups really pop, making sure these lines look nice and sharp. And y'all know how I do it, guys. I don't like to put too, too much enhancement on my client, but I want to put enough to where it makes it look nice and clean, but not to where it looks fake. You know what I'm saying? So that's basically what I'm doing here. And uh, just for some reference, I am using the uh, Beam Team XL from Tune 45, and I'm using No Drip, and I got my, uh, I'm using a Sean Cuts hair enhancement card. And y'all see how far I hold my gun, you know what I'm saying? I, I don't hold it too, too far. I just give a couple sprays and I move on. And that's just my way of doing it. I see some people get really close and I see some people get really far. I think it's just based on preference. But all right, guys, check it out. This is the before look. This is how my client came into the shop looking. As you can see, he needed a cut. And this is how my boy left the shop looking. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this haircut in the comments, guys. If y'all like this video, please make sure to smash that like button. Also, if you're new to my channel, make sure and subscribe one time for your boy. Remember, guys, if you're in the Houston, Texas area and you need a haircut, you can uh, book with your boy at tankbechopping.com. And uh, yeah, guys, make sure to follow me on Instagram. My Instagram is in the top left corner. And that's basically it for this video, guys. I appreciate y'all YouTube. Until next time, let's go.